Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Render Man tutorial. And today we're going to be having a look at Llama, which is the new material system that's been added to uh, Render Man 24 and was actually created in conjunction with ILM. So uh, that's pretty exciting and I'm very excited to get into it because it's a pretty interesting system for setting up shaders. So what I've got here is a very simple scene, as you can see, just a sphere inside a little cube uh, with an overhead light and our camera. And what I'm going to be doing is just taking through the basics of setting up a llama material to begin with. And then in some future tutorials, we'll be going into more complex shading, uh, including PBRs uh, from Substance and um, some more procedural methods like I uh, have used in previous tutorials. So let's get into it. And hey, make sure you're subscribed with notifications on, otherwise you may be missing out on the many tutorials that we're releasing for free each week here on YouTube. So the first thing you want to do is open up the Hypershade Editor, which is that button right there, and we are going to create a Llama surface. So we'll just hit Tab and type in Llama Surface, and this will give us the initial nodes that we need to start building out our network tree. So I'm going to assign that to my sphere, just by selecting my sphere and holding down right click and then assign to uh, selected object. So if I attempt to render this now, what will happen is we won't get anything essentially because what we have here is just essentially the shading group um, and then a utility node which is accepting in materials. So how Llama works is it's, it's very modular and previously in things like the PXR surface shader, um, all of your inputs were all on the one um, all on the one shader. It's like an uber shader essentially. So you've got your diffuse lobe, you've got your specular, um, rough and transmissive, all that is on the one shader. However, with Llama, all of those individual lobes are broken out into separate uh, nodes. So what we can do is if we just type in Llama diffuse, we'll get the diffuse node. And you'll see on the surface node that we've got a material front and material back. So if you were doing front and back sided materials, you could actually individualize them, which you couldn't previously do um, with the Pixar service. So that's actually quite a good little feature. Um, we're only going to be working with a single sided object though, which is the sphere. So we can actually go into the Llama surface node if we want and change that to one. It doesn't make a huge difference uh, in terms of setting things up. Uh, but it might just be good practice in case uh, you accidentally start putting things into material back. You actually want to be putting them to material front. So we're going to run the llama diffuse from the out color into the material front. And uh, just to prove that it's working, we'll just change the color to this lovely greeny tealy color. Um, and you could also run this out color into the surface shader if you want. Uh, or you could actually run the out color of the diffuse into the surface shader if you want. And that will actually give you the uh, preview in Maya of the color that you're working with. If you're working with a lot of different uh, textures and, and colors and things, that might be useful for you. Uh, it was a little bit more annoying to see it set up with uh, the Pixar surface because you had to have separate um, initial shading groups set up for it. Whereas this is a little bit more direct. So I quite like that feature. So if we run the IPR now, you'll see that we get our ball there shaded and um, what I've got here is just the default shading for diffuse so um, zero roughness diffuse has got a default amount of roughness regardless uh, I could increase that obviously to further diffuse the surface which would make the specular highlights appear more spread out and obviously diffused um, all right so what if we wanted to make it specular um, we have only got one input here for the material front and if say we would use the uh, for specularity we'd use the llama dielectric um, but we want to be able to plug this in but we can't because if we just plug that in by itself what we actually get is glass because it's dielectric so if you are looking to do glass that is the way that you could do it. You've got similar uh, setup to how you would do it with the uh, Pixar surface. So you can turn it to thin if you want it to be thin glass. You have a few other options, which I'll go into in separate tutorials. But yes, without going too heavily into this, obviously you've got your transmission tint, your reflection. You can go between scientific and artistic. I prefer scientific for setting up the IOR. I just think it's a little bit more intuitive. Um, and thin, like I said before, if we turn that on, we get thin glass, good for um, bubbles and that sort of thing. So if we want to mix it so we have a specular surface, we need to actually add these two together, which we do with the llama 
add like so and we can run the diffuse into material 1 and the dielectric into material 2 and then the out color I'm just hitting 3 on my keyboard to expand that out color into the material front now I'm going to leave that diffuse going into this um, shading group because it just makes it easier to identify it in the viewport and we'll hit IPR and you'll see it hasn't changed and that's because we need to increase the mix so back in the hypershade editor with the llama add you can see that the weight for input 2 which is the um, dielectric is set to 0 if we increase that all the way to 1.0 you'll see we get a thin uh, glassy material but with the diffuse mixed in so to get it just specular under dielectric we just need to turn the transmission down to 0 um, and keep the reflection tint and we can keep the IOR we'll turn thin off and you can adjust the roughness as you want I will keep it as is and there you go now another mixing method is using the llama mix node so I'll run my diffuse into material 1 and my out color into material front again and we'll create a new llama diffuse and I'll run that into material 2 and then I can use say a Voronoi's to control the mix of the two so essentially if I just use the mix zero would be toward the material one and one would be toward the material two so this isn't actually a layering or adding addition um, math this is just a blend between the two so 0.5 you get an even mix of both and then sort of at 0.75 you get more 50% more of the diffuse second diffuse input so I'm going to keep the uh, going to run the result F into the mix I'm going to change this diffuse color to be a lovely pink uh, we're going to need to adjust that Vora noise to be a bit more frequent and you can start to see the blend of the two so at the positions on the Vora noise where there is a value of zero it's going to be mixed more to the first diffuse input which is the green you can just barely see it there and with the uh, mix set towards the value of one so the areas which are white in the uh, Vora noise are going to be picking up that pink more so that's quite useful you could obviously continue to layer in and add in after the fact so we could add in and add here and then again we could use a dielectric and run the out color into the material two and then the result out color into the material front also something i noticed i don't know if this is probably a maya thing um, is that sometimes even when this is fully expanded out color doesn't become visible so just hit one two three again and it will just reset that um, and then we'll just make sure that we've got the dielectric set up there correctly no transmission uh, that should be fine and I like this 1.5 that's like glass so that should be cool I accidentally deleted the Vora noise there so I'll just re-add that in and there you go so you can start to see that you could get build up very complex shading networks um, with procedurals or uh, as you may want to uh, start putting your PBRs into your color inputs uh, for texture so it would be the same you just still if you're adding a color into your diffuse uh, into your diffuse that's a texture map you'd still want to use a PXR texture and run the result RGB into that color and then load your texture as you normally would uh, but again I'll go over that when we do some more stuff with PBRs from substance I will also just point out in place of dielectric you may want to have something that is more metallic looking in which case you would want to use a conductor and we are going to run that conductor out color into material 2 and add a set to 1 on both so we should get a metallic um, sort of reflection now as you can see there so it's pretty cool stuff um, I'm just getting into it now really uh, but I'm really liking the results that I'm seeing I haven't done a one-to-one -one, uh, test in terms of render time uh, disparity between the Pixar service and the uh, material X stuff I don't think there is much to it though really I think it's much of the muchness so if you're looking for an improvement in render time I don't think you're really gonna see much uh, maybe in much more dense procedurals that there might be the case that the llama would be better uh, but again I would have to do a complex test and um, we'll see how I've got how I go for time as to whether that's the case uh, but yeah otherwise look out for some new tutorials coming out for llama in the near future uh, I'm like I said very excited to get into it in terms of uh, its workflow with substance so uh, that should be coming up shortly so make sure you stay tuned to the channel
That's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, make sure you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week, just like this one. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord, and more by clicking the link below.